Welcome to our webinar, Dynamatic Defines True Pump System Efficiency. We are very proud to partner with Treatment Plant Operator and Water Systems Operator magazines to present this informative look at alternative options to variable frequency drives for variable speed pump and blower applications. Let me introduce myself. I'm Gary Patterson, Midwest Region Manager for Dynamatic and Water and Wastewater Treatment Specialist. And I'm Anthony Anabali. Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Dynamatic. I'd like to turn the microphone over to Mr. Gary Patterson. We'll begin with the purpose and learning objectives of this webinar. Thanks, Anthony. In today's webinar, we'll be looking at how eddy current drives operate, presenting basic application engineering considerations, and comparing the three predominant variable speed technologies for pump and blower applications. Then we'll discuss some cri selection criteria, considering first cost, operating costs, and total ownership costs. We'll compare these to variable frequency technology and rare earth magnetic drives. Lastly, we think you'll find some very interesting results concerning longevity and experiences with VFDs in a review of a recent customer survey. First, a little bit about our company. Dynamatic was founded in 1931 and was a division of the Eaton Corporation from 1946 till 1995. Drive Source International acquired Dynamatic in 2002. We continue to bring you true efficiency with Dynamatic pump drive systems, factory original systems, manufacturing, and engineering services. Our major focus is the municipal water and industrial water and wastewater markets and has been for over 50 years. Since DriveSource International acquired the assets of Dynamatic Corporation, a major market focus has been water and wastewater, pump and blower applications. With the Eaton Corporation's long history in the market, eddy current drives were the predominant technology for pump and blower applications prior to VFD technology. The worldwide list of pumps and blowers using eddy current electromagnetic technology is well over 200,000 installations strong. This slide shows a sampling of recent installations in the United States using dynamatic eddy current drives and controls that were chosen specifically by using the criteria of true system efficiency. These municipalities and industrial customers made their final decisions based on one or more main factors, initial capital cost, reduced kilowatt usage, or the low life cycle cost and longevity of eddy current drive technology. Okay, let's take a minute to watch a video on how eddy current drive technology actually works. Dynamatic Adjustable Speed Drive Systems. Bring true system efficiency to your facility. Lower your all-around costs. Lower your capital costs by up to 65%. Lower your energy costs and lower your lifetime cost of ownership. Dynamatic systems employ eddy current technology consisting simply of a constant speed AC induction motor and a magnetic clutch governed by a small digital controller. The amount of power available is determined by the size of the motor. A rotating drum is connected to the shaft of the motor and an electromagnetic coupling is used to vary the speed of output. The only contact points between the drum and output rotor are bearings, and the motor and drive are separated by an air gap. A clutch coil, tachometer, and output bearing complete the internal components in standard drives. A digital clutch controller that typically uses less than 1% of the total system power is used to govern the voltage sent to the clutch coil. By design, Dynamatic allows the AC motor to run at its optimum rated speed. By regulating voltage to the clutch coil, a magnetic flux field is created and distortion of the flux field creates torque. The greater the power to the coil, the greater the strength of the magnetic flux field and the greater the output torque. A tachometer provides output feedback to the digital controller, making Dynamatic a closed loop system. Dynamatic systems produce virtually no harmonic noise, can save up to 65% of your capital costs, and provide higher overall drive system operating efficiency, 
Dynamatic systems can outlast VFDs by as much as 6 to 1 and are easy to maintain. Our systems offer advanced digital controls. Worldwide, industrial facilities and municipalities are discovering the true meaning of system efficiency. Experienced plant managers know Dynamatic adjustable speed drive systems are the reliable, lower cost solution. Dynamatic adjustable speed drive systems, the winning choice for water and wastewater applications. All right, what about that term eddy currents? In eddy current drives, the drum is a solid rolled piece of steel, sometimes enhanced by copper lining the interior. As the drum rotates through the magnetic flux of the magnet, eddy currents are induced in the steel drum. These eddy currents in turn create their own magnetic fields, and the interaction of the two fields produces torque. The torque is controlled by regulating the excitation current to the coil. Similar to an induction motor, the rotation of the magnet lags that of the drum as some slip is necessary to induce the eddy currents. For smaller units, a monocoil can be used as shown here. For larger units, we've found it more efficient to use independent salient field poles bolted to the output rotor. Here we see a salient pole unit in cross section. The poles are connected in series with alternating winding direction for alternating north-south poles, similar to a synchronous motor. All eddy current drives regulate speed through use of a tachometer. Tachometer types can be AC or DC generators or a magnetic pulse pickup. In this cross-section, the tachometer is an AC type. We select models based on a full load rating of 1 to 3 percent slip, up to 5,000 horsepower. Here are some basic formulas which dictate the performance of the eddy current drive. The three basic variables to be considered are motor horsepower, load horsepower, and slip loss. Here's a typical speed versus torque curve. As expected, as the excitation current is increased, the torque increases, almost linearly. You can imagine that we could draw an infinite number of these curves one for any value of current. In this way, the unit can produce any value of torque at any speed within its ultimate capability. For an ideal centrifugal pump or blower, the load follows the affinity laws. Torque varies as the square of the speed and the horsepower as the cube. Note that the maximum slip loss occurs at 33% slip at which it is 16.2 percent of rated load. Now in most pumping applications, the pump is started against a closed valve, a condition which has its own speed torque curve. When the pump reaches sufficient speed to overcome static head, the valve is opened and a second curve prevails. Note what happens to the maximum slip loss. Note further that the pump never operates below this point, as to do so would move no water. In fact, most pumps are operated at a minimum flow well above zero flow, which further limits the maximum slip loss. Eddy current drives are most often compared to variable frequency drives for most applications. In a recently conducted survey of engineers, consultants, plant management, and operations staff, 58% of all respondents reported experiencing problems with VFDs. Among all respondents who said they were serviced VFDs during the last two years, 78% responded that the VFDs serviced were under 10 years old, and 42% said they were under 5 years old. Considering budget money is at a premium for municipal and industrial projects, why is this acceptable that equipment of this complexity and expense is disposable in less than 10 years? Among all respondents, the most mentioned problem with VFDs has been harmonics, followed by line voltage sensitivity, replacement parts availability, the cost of replacing parts, and the cost of repairs and on-site service. Ancillary costs typically included air conditioning, 
and harmonic cancellation devices. I'm going to turn it over to Gary to elaborate on VFD's effects and negative consequences. Thanks, Anthony. The most commonly reported problems with VFDs are related to nonlinear currents and voltages, otherwise known as harmonics. The power conversion process used in VFDs produces harmonics in the power supply to which they are connected. These harmonic currents can inadvertently coincide with resonant frequencies in the power system, especially if power factor capacitors are installed elsewhere on the system. The result can be an increase in current, which has been known to cause capacitor failures or nuisance tripping of protective, protective equipment. The initial capital cost of mitigation equipment must be factored into projects when considering variable frequency drives. These same harmonics have the potential to interfere with telephone and, and computer circuits, sensitive instrumentation, and distributed control system communication. Often, this interference is not discovered until the equipment is commissioned. It is then that further mitigation equipment is required, but usually not budgeted. If VFDs are operated on standby generators, the reduction in available current exacerbates the harmonic distortion. This has been known to disrupt the operation of the generator itself or interfere with other critical loads supplied by the generator. Often this problem is not discovered until the equipment is installed and operating. When sizing a new generator, increasing the alternator size has to be considered. When installing where there is an existing generator, mitigation costs can increase substantially. Often overlooked in the design phase are the incoming power transformers. These transformers are subjected to increased winding and core losses caused by harmonic distortion when variable frequency drives are added to existing facility power grids. This could necessitate new higher cost transformers or reduced capacity on existing transformers. The output side of the VFD also has a harmonic current. Motors are designed to operate on sinusoidal voltage and current. Any deviation from that waveform induces currents in the motor and rotor, motor, rotor and stator, resulting in additional heating but no useful work. If the heating is severe enough, this can result in early failure. In recent years, manufacturers have begun to design inverter duty motors designed to withstand these difficulties, but these design features add cost. If a retrofit application is considered, this could require using a new motor instead of reapplying an existing motor. By the way, most of these maladies are well documented. In fact, these potential pitfalls were documented in a white paper published by a prominent VFD manufacturer. It's difficult to know the full extent of the effect of VFDs on motor efficiency. A recent cover story in Electrical Apparatus Magazine concluded that measuring these effects is almost impossible using industry standard testing techniques. One thing is certain though, some increase in total loss will occur if either current or voltage is not completely sinusoidal. Today's PWM VFDs operate by switching a constant DC voltage on and off at a high frequency to simulate a sinusoidal AC waveform. This high speed switching induces a voltage on the motor shaft which wants to discharge to ground. Often the path to ground is through the motor bearings which can cause fluting of the bearing race as shown here. To combat this, manufacturers have supplied insulated bearings but then the current will flow elsewhere, perhaps through the pump bearings. To address this problem, several manufacturers have offered shaft grounding devices such as the one shown here. That same high frequency switching is often referred to as the carrier frequency. Similar to frequency modulated broadcast signals, the pulses are on and off, positive and negative, in varying combinations to create an average voltage waveform which approximates a sine wave. This high frequency often induces audible noise in the motors. It's thought that the noise is produced by the motor laminations vibrating at the carrier frequency. This can be very loud and annoying. It might also be above the audible range and could interfere with radio communications.
<laughs> Here's one customer's low-cost solution to a carrier frequency noise problem. Uh, it's reported that this does not completely solve the problem. Sometimes VFDs just become obsolete. Technological advancement and cost pressures have led to frequent design changes which often leave older units without support. One company's recent history is instructive. As recently as 1994, the design on the left was introduced. In 2003, in partnership with a European affiliate, a new design was promoted. After that partnership dissolved, another European partner introduced yet another model leaving no source for parts in the United States. This has left older models without parts or service support. Uh, by the way, the current model is already in its second design generation. An example of obsolescence frustration is seen in the following case study of St. Joseph, Missouri's water protection. Plant manager Don Gilpin has expressed his frustration that St. Joseph, Missouri has spent millions of dollars replacing variable frequency drives on numerous occasions. Originally sold on the premise of efficiency, the short life cycle and obsolescence of the variable frequency drives have led St. Joe's to seek a more reliable alternative. An eddy current drive located in a remote pumping station was discovered to be running since 1965 with an average annual maintenance cost of $40 a year. This led to a, visa, a feasibility study and the decision to convert all variable frequency drives as well as new applications, including three new 300 horsepower, 900 RPM pump drives to eddy current technology. The word efficiency goes well beyond simple definition of energy in versus energy out. It includes the initial expenditure, effort, and ongoing maintenance necessary to operate a pump or blower. Efficiency is a package of the three, not just a wattage calculation. For example, in 2009, a major industrial user invested $1.3 million due to conventional replacement wisdom for the complete installation of a single variable frequency drive on an 800 horsepower, 4,000 volt, 710 RPM pumping motor. In comparison, the total for remanufacturing an existing eddy current drive and installation of a new control was $208,000. This replacement mentality cost the facility $1.1 million to replace a working eddy current pump drive. In addition to the capital cost investment, the VFD in question has been out of service twice for up to eight weeks at a time due to parts availability since its original installation in 2009. Ask yourself, is this efficient? When considering all three efficiency factors, or often just initial costs, dynamatic drives can achieve savings of up to 65% over VFDs. In addition, VFDs often require harmonic mitigation or secondary cooling, which increases equipment cost, energy consumption, and requires additional space to be dedicated. Where space and treatment plants is at a premium, often the installation of VFDs requires construction or expansion. On a 1,000 horsepower VFD, the cabinet size is approximately 6 feet by 8 feet. The equivalent dynamatic digital control is 36 inches wide by 40 inches tall. Right, Anthony. On the left, we see a 400 to 1,000 horsepower medium voltage unit from a manufacturer claiming to have the smallest available design. The required ventilation fan mounted on top is not shown and adds about 18 inches in height. By contrast, the photo on the right shows a wall mount Dynamatic EC2000 control for the same application. These photos are approximately to scale. The most common rationale for choosing a VFD is the expectation of higher efficiency. Experience has shown this is not the case in many centrifugal pump and blower applications. Here's a real life comparison from a user in Sacramento. They had the opportunity to compare an eddy current drive and a VFD on identical pumps in the same application. I'm sure some will be surprised to see that the eddy current drive outperforms the VFD on energy consumption at the upper end of the speed range. Now, of course, this is where it counts. As we saw earlier, pumps rarely operate below 75% speed. 
If we assume the average operating speed for this application is 90%, we realize a net $7,000 in annual power savings in addition to the other advantages we've already discussed. And like any reputable variable speed drive supplier, we have our own energy calculator to facilitate analyzing application options. With our calculator, we compare eddy current drives to a choice of VFDs or constant speed throttling options. The user enters motor horsepower and native speed and estimates the utilization factor, average speed of operation, and the price of electrical power. A press of the button brings a comparison of losses and an estimate of annual power savings. The example on the screen is based on the Sacramento case we saw in the previous slide. Introduced in 1999 as a competitor to variable frequency drives are the rare earth magnetic couplings or adjustable speed drives. It is important to note these are not eddy current drives. Manufacturers of this technology claim improved efficiency over variable frequency drive technology. This technology uses high power neodymium iron boron permanent magnets to create an induced in electromotive force used for torque transfer. The system physically separates the two elements of the motor system, placing magnet disks on the load shaft and a conductor assembly on the motor shaft. The motor torque is transferred to the load across an air gap, varying the air gap by means of a separate mechanical actuator between the magnets and the conductor changes the strength of the magnetic field and hence controls the output speed. Now, it's important to note that both the rare earth magnet technology and eddy current electromotive drive technology offer an advantage over variable frequency drives when considering power consumption. Because both designs convert torque magnetically, it's not surprising that the dynamatic eddy current drive and the rare earth magnetic coupling have a comparable power usage characteristic. One of the main differences between these two technologies is the control of the drive. Eddy current drives use a low voltage DC current to create magnetic flux in a fixed air gap. The rare earth magnets use an ancillary device such as an actuator to expand or contract the air gap. The eddy current drive control has an onboard communication such as 4 to 20 milliamp or 0 to 10 volt inputs and outputs for the interconnection to the process controls. The rare earth magnet device requires additional electronics for communication to process controls. Eddy current drives in both vertical and horizontal design are air cooled up to 5,000 horsepower. Rare earth magnet drives must be water cooled above 400 horsepower. Rare earth magnetic drives were introduced in 1999 with approximately 4 to 5,000 installations worldwide. Eddy current electromagnetic drives were introduced in 1931 with over 200,000 installations worldwide. Rare earth magnetic drives have a stated lifespan of 15 to 30 years. In addition, Neodymium magnets are sensitive to changes in temperature and are more prone to oxidization than any other magnet alloy. Eddy current drive technology has a proven lifespan of greater than 40 years. The coils used to create the magnetic field in an eddy current drive are readily available copper composition, encapsulated similar to standard AC motor windings. As you may have read, there is a worldwide shortage of rare earth magnets. Dynamatic supports eddy current drives with original equipment parts, normally from stock for the life of the product. Rare earth magnetic drives are typically returned to the factory for service. Eddy current drives can be serviced by any ESA motor shop worldwide, often on site. Another way Dynamatic offers true system efficiency is by extending the life of the existing eddy current drives. Not only do we support original controls dating back to the 1950s, Dynamatic has developed a truly universal eddy current control capable of inter-brand support. Unlike competing technologies such as variable frequency drives, upgrading need not require replacing the entire drive system. Through a simple digital control upgrade, municipalities and industrial customers can and have integrated to modern SCADA systems to an avoided costly drive system replacements. Dynamatic has developed a truly universal solution designed to save capital costs by avoiding unnecessary replacement projects. Some of the key features of the Dynamatic EC2000 control are its versatility, compact size, and ability to upgrade all manufacturers' eddy current drive controls. 
installation, proven simplicity, reliability, ELC and SCADA compatibility, and superior speed regulation, as well as the ability to accept all tachometer inputs, local and remote monitoring capability, programmable run presets, onboard outputs, and versatile serial communications are just some of the features of the model EC2000 digital control. An example of this versatility can be seen in this case study. In St. Louis, Missouri, the LeMay pumping station needed SCADA integration for eddy current drives in service since the 1960s. Faced with budget constraints, a $3 million replacement project was beyond their scope. The solution was to simply upgrade the controls. Here are some comments from the assistant manager at the LeMay pumping station. Fiscal responsibility wins out in the end. And at Dynamatic, that's what we call true system efficiency. We'll now entertain any questions you may have. Gary, we have a question from Alan. The question is, what is the effect of eddy current drives on power factor? Well, the answer is kind of uh, multifaceted. Since we have nothing to do with the conversion of the electrical power to the motor, it could be said that the, e, the eddy current drive has no direct effect on power factor. However, it has to be acknowledged that as the uh, whole purpose of the variable speed drive is to reduce the load, the reduced load on the motor will bring the motor into a power factor region that would actually be reduced above, uh, below its uh, normal operating range. However, that's, uh, con that concern can be mitigated by the fact that because the load is so low, the power factor uh, fraction is applied against a very small uh, value of power. And therefore, the, uh, the total VARs consumed would be uh, considerably less than at full speed. I see we have another question uh, from Miles. Let me see if I can read the whole thing. It says, I was a bit late in entering the webinar. Can you retrofit with existing motors? Anthony, you want to take that? Absolutely. Um, Miles, yes, the answer is yes. Uh, uh, there are occasions where we do use existing motors to retrofit the eddy current drive. Because the high, high available torque on an eddy current drive, uh, we would have to obviously evaluate the individual motor, but typically a standard uh, AC motor can be retrofitted onto uh, an existing eddy current coupling. Thanks, Miles. Uh, Mr. Barnett asks, uh, why would medium voltage seem especially suited to eddy current use? Well, that's a good question. Actually, the best reason for that is that the eddy current drive is not operating on the system voltage. It's actually operating uh, uh, from a, basically a lighting circuit powering the controller. And therefore, uh, we don't have any high voltage uh, conversion uh, devices, and uh, that considerably reduces our first cost. As well, Gary, I'd like to add that uh, the initial capital cost of a uh, medium voltage drive in comparison to the initial capital cost of a medium voltage eddy current drive are typically, uh, the eddy current drive is about a third of the price of the install installed cost of a medium voltage uh, VFD. Absolutely. I have a question from uh, Dennis Ryan. Can these drives be programmed to ramp up the pump speed slowly on start? Absolutely. The uh, Even the old style controllers had uh, ramped uh, uh, speed control, but with our EC2000 we have programmable ramps and uh, even programmable uh, avoidance, uh, speed avoidances and of course, you can also ramp the speed down as well, so we, do, we can avoid problems like water hammering and so forth on shutdown. I'm not seeing any more com uh, any any more questions coming in. I 
here comes something. Miles says, uh, when you say eddy currents, are you inducing a DC voltage into the windings? Well, no, no, we're not. Um, the uh, the DC voltage from our controller is used to excite a DC coil in the eddy current drive. We're not doing anything to the motor windings at all. And uh, as we tried to describe earlier, the eddy currents that we referred to are the currents that are induced in the uh, magnetic steel ring of the eddy current drive. And uh, it is those eddy currents that are put to use in developing a, uh, a magnetic field to interact with that of the, uh, the coil-induced magnet. You want uh, you want to take this one, uh, Anthony? Yeah, I'll take the uh, question from uh, John Barnett there. Uh, John asked a question of uh, comparable capital costs with VFDs uh, on a uh, low voltage system, uh, 200 horsepower and above. Uh, eddy current drives are comparable with uh, variable frequency drives, especially when you uh, consider all of the ancillary costs with uh, VFDs, including mitigation devices, air conditioning, etc. Uh, the original capital costs are comparable. Again, when you go into the medium voltage range, typically we've found that the eddy current drive system is less expensive than the medium voltage drives. Uh, we seem to have skipped over Mr. Buckingham's question. We have independent testing reports for power consumption. Well, uh, I believe, Anthony, if I'm correct, the Sacramento example was, was actually conducted by the customer. I don't know if they used an outside testing agency or if they did it themselves. Do I know? believe they did use an outside testing agency, and uh, we can email the uh, results of that question. We will have to ask the municipality directly. Here's one from Alan. Uh, how does dynamatic claim to outperform VFDs on power consumption? I'm surprised we didn't get that one earlier because we see that a lot. Um, well, the primary reason is that uh, while eddy current drives, uh, well, I will say this, magnetic, uh, magnetic technology. variable frequency drives will report a relatively high frequency and, and, a, and a flat frequency, uh, relatively high efficiency and flat curve for that. They, uh, they don't include in that calculation, and, and probably correctly so, uh, they don't include the negative effects on motor efficiency that we described, uh, nor do they uh, account for anything like uh, harmonics mitigation or auxiliary cooling costs. And in addition, uh, there, there are additional losses induced in the system through the uh, transformers and switchgear feeding the equipment. And it is those costs that are added, or those uh, losses that are added to the uh, variable frequency drive that, in effect, don't occur on the eddy current system to any degree at all. And uh, in that way, we actually, uh, we actually do realize results like we, so, like we show in the Sacramento example. A question from... Uh... Uh, Matthew Mays, uh, is there going to be an interface for PC programming on the DSI controller? Well, um, that's going to be a, a, an answer for our uh, for our control engineering department. But that is definitely one of those things that we intend to implement for the EC2000 controller in uh, in a soon to be introduced upgrade. Actually, the uh, development is underway right now for a direct interface. Um, we are actually putting the, the uh, interface unit in the testing and burn-in booth in the next week. Well, that's, that's good news for me. I wasn't aware of, of that detail. Miles asks if there's a minimum horsepower application that would be cost effective. Well, the fact of the matter is we make uh, any current drives even down to fractional horsepower uh, ratings. In uh, in this application, they may not always be the most cost-effective choice at that level, but um, probably by the time we get in the neighborhood of between 100 and 200 horsepower, we would have a very uh, comparable first-cost uh, uh, comparison. And then if you wanted to apply some of these other advantages that we've been talking about, you could justify uh, even a higher uh, capital cost uh, to uh, 
to offset the uh, the longevity and uh, reliability uh, examples that we're uh, that we're claiming. Miles has a question asking, uh, can these be used on submersible motors? Uh, we took that slide out of the presentation because we thought it would be too long. Uh, no, we can't do that. Uh, the, the eddy current drive is air uh, cooled and in order to apply it to uh, a pump we need to have, we need to be able to connect it to the pump shaft. So um, were an eddy current drive to be available for submersible pumps, they would have to be built into the submersible pump. I have a question from Alan uh, asking if training is uh, provided for on-site maintenance personnel. And the answer to that question is always yes. Dynamatic uh, Drive Source International prides itself on making training for staff a part of its regular repertoire when we're specifying projects and we often include the training in all quotations at no charge. I have a uh, question from Dylan Buckingham. Will the eddy current drive take motor to pump misalignment like a permanent magnet VSD? Well, I can only answer half of that question, Dylan, because I'm not I'm not aware of the uh, degree to which a permanent magnet VSD uh, adjusts or or corrects for misalignment. The fact of the matter is, the uh, eddy current drive needs to be aligned to its driven load, a pump or a blower, in the same manner in which you would a normal induction motor. It is the, there's, there are certain standards that for uh, shaft parallel and shaft offset that need to be met. Um, I don't know, are, are, are you aware, Alan, or um, Anthony, that uh, whether we have any kind of capability for uh, correction of misalignment on these permanent magnet drives? Um, actually, I believe that the permanent magnet manufacturer discusses that. However, I'm also aware of uh, some municipalities that have had uh, uh, some situations where they have misalignment issues and vibration issues with the drives, often because the components are not properly um, um, balanced in initial setup and if there's any uh, imbalance or shaft deflection the resultant vibration is actually very negative on the uh, pump bearings and we've seen applications where that's been the case just recently uh, as the eddy current drive technology is all enclosed and the air gaps are fixed air gaps everything is aligned uh, completely in the eddy current drive so there's not a lot of misalignment in the drive. Oh certainly. Uh, Miles is interested in whether he, he could become a rep or distributor and you're in touch with the rec correct people Miles. Uh, Anthony is my pre vice president of sales and, and myself as a one of the regional sales managers can talk to you uh, about that uh, in a separate conversation. And Miles on the screen you'll see uh, sales at dynamatic.com just please send in your particulars and we'd be interested in talking with you. Thank you. Uh, Bob is asking, can the drive output speed be above the motor speed? Uh, afraid not. This is a, uh, this is a technology that is based on converting the mechanical power of the motor, and, and so we are limited to the motor speed minus uh, a certain minimum amount of slip, which is usually uh, between zero and three percent. We maybe have exhausted our audience for for uh, for questions. Uh, in which case, I would uh, I would want to thank everybody for uh, for uh, tuning in and chiming in with your questions. Uh, Just a side note: if you do come up with a question uh, after the uh, webinar's conclusion, uh, note the sales at dynamatic.com email address, and please feel free to either call or write in with any questions for uh, Mr. Gary Patterson or myself or any of our engineering staff. Okay. Um, as long as we have your email and your names, we will be preparing your PDH certificates and emailing them to you for those of you that uh, want to apply them against your professional engineering license or perhaps even your uh, plant operator's license. Please visit us at our website, uh, www.dynamatic.com. And again, feel free to 
ask uh, any questions of our staff, and we'd be happy to answer anything anytime. Uh, thank you again for your uh, uh, participation in the uh, True Systems Efficiency uh, webinar, and we look forward to hearing from you in the near future. Thanks, everybody.